Judges chapter number 18. For sake of time, we'll begin reading verse 11. The Bible says, And there went from thence of the family of the Danites out of Zorah and out of Eshtol six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pinched in Kareth Jerem in Judah, wherefore they called the place Mahaladin unto this day. Behold, it is behind Kareth Jerem. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Lashish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, and a teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned thitherward, and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither, and took the graven image, the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priests stood in the entering of the gate with the six hundred men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these men went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod, the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priests unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel. And the priest's heart, heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that we've been adopted and born again into thy family. We thank you, Lord, for... Uh, the Word of God, we thank you for the people of God, the house of God, and the privilege we have to come and worship you on this Wednesday evening. I pray that, Lord, you'd edify your people tonight. May you encourage them. May you certainly enlighten them to thy truth. May we all grow closer to you. May we all uh, have our minds and hearts open to what thus saith the Lord. We certainly pray in a crowd this size, if there be anybody that are strangers to the grace of God, we pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. We do pray that God you'd send revival throughout this land. We pray that in this day that we live in, and Lord, we believe we're living in the last days, perilous times has surely come. I pray that, Lord, we'd see great revival break out and many souls come to Christ. Lord, I realize that... Lord, there are many that uh, uh, have turned a deaf ear to thy word, but God, we're glad for those that still seek thee and still receive the word of God with gladness. Now, bless as only you can. Be with those that are sick. Touch Miss Mary. God, we certainly pray for those that are providentially hindered. You'd be with them. Lord, we thank you for hearing and answering prayer. We're thankful Miss Janet's better. Miss Lynn is better. God, we're certainly excited, looking forward to what you have in store for us tonight. Now glorify your namesake, use this unworthy vessel. Father, we'll bless you for what you do. Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. After the death of Joshua, Israel became divided and fell into grave depravity. God uh, raised up 13 judges to try and bring Israel back to where God uh, would be the God of the nation that he so founded and so loved. Uh, and we find that in chapter 18, this begins with the tribe of the Danites who really did not have any territory to call their home. Uh, they sent out five spies to seek out a place uh, 
where they could uh, uh, take up their residence. It could be their homeland. These five spies did that. Uh, they returned, uh, and we find that uh, 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 their conquest uh, uh, happens in this chapter where they take over a territory that becomes their land. But I want you to notice a few things in the Word of God. We'll get to the thought tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, the informing. In verse number 14, we find the Bible says, Then answered the five men that went in to spy out the country of Leash, and said unto the brother, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, a teraphim, a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider uh, what ye have to do. Uh, not only uh, did these men uh, spy out a land, they spied out this particular town or this particular uh, uh, place. Uh, they came into the home of Micah. They found some uh, things that were in his house. Uh, and these men, now informed by the Clint, those that are with him, uh, uh, what's in there uh, and uh, that they need to go and take them. We find that they informed them. Uh, uh, friend, uh, listen, uh, 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 the devil's always looking for things that he can take uh, and uh, you better be careful when you inform people uh, what's going on uh, I'm reminded Hezekiah showed uh, 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 those uh, uh, from a far country all the treasures of the house of God wasn't long uh, and the Babylonians came and took the treasures uh, uh, listen uh, the devil's not all knowing uh, and uh, he only knows what you let him know you ought to be very careful uh, can I say I've seen people stand up and say, uh, from this day forward, uh, I'm not going to let the devil bother me. I'm going to get victory over this thing, only to find a brother Brian fall into a deeper uh, uh, state because uh, you, don't, you don't tempt the devil. I've heard people say, pray for me. Uh, I, uh, I'm really bothered by this. Well, you're telling the devil what uh, bullets to fire at you. Uh, what darts to throw at you. Uh, uh, you better be careful how you inform because uh, the devil takes very good note on uh, uh, how he can disrupt us. We find the informing. In verse 17, we find the impounding. They took it. They took those things. In verse 23, we didn't read that, but I want you to notice the interception. Look what happens. And they cried unto the children of Dan, uh, and uh, they turned their faces and said unto Micah, Why aileth thee uh, that thou comest with such a company? Uh, when he found out that those things that he had had been stolen, uh, then he runs after this company of uh, the Danites to try and recover them. We see he intercepts them in their journey onto the place they wanted uh, for a homeland. Now notice uh, the irritation of Micah. Look what he said in verse 24. And he said, Ye have taken away, look here, my gods which I made mm -mm. and the priest and you're gone away and what have I more and what is this that you say unto me what aileth thee mm -hmm. notice he was upset that they took his priest and his gods which he made mm -hmm. now brother Ray if I was to say tonight that People get upset when their little idols get taken. They say, well, we don't have any idols. Hmm? Can I say his gods were of his making? And they're little idols that a lot of people who come to the house of God faithfully have in their, their house and in their possessions. There are things that they are controlled by that are of their own making. Hmm? Uh, I'm not preaching on that. If I was, Brother Tony, I'd hit on some things. Hmm? Uh, it amazes me how people won't read their Bible, but they won't miss their TV shows. Might be a God of your making. Hmm? You say, are you preaching against TV? No, I'm just preaching that if it gets more of your attention than God, you might want to do some checking up. That might be your God. Hmm? Huh? And I won't even get on that little thing you carry in your pocket or your purse that controls so much of your time. Used to, we had them to make calls on. It amazes me. We don't call much on them, but we do spend a lot of time on them. Mm -hmm. uh, could be a God of your making. I wonder if you talk to God as much as you talk on those things. I won't even ask for a show of hands how many people even have a landline anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, it's real quiet. I haven't even got to my, to my thought. Huh? Could be some gods of your own making. Can I say that anything that you put above God becomes your God? Yeah, amen. 
anyone you put before God becomes your God. Hmm? And these were gods of his own making. Can I say, a lot of people say, well, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. Hmm? Too many times uh, we do it willingly. I heard a preacher made a lot of people upset when he got on his congregation about how much time they miss church. They claim to be Christians, claim to be going to, get, going to heaven, but how much time they miss church. And yet there are people uh, in parts of the world that have to go to underground churches that count it a privilege every time they get to assemble and they never miss. And their lives are in jeopardy. Can I say what has happened in America? We've had it so easy for so long that we've been lulled to sleep and it's happened in our churches. Hmm? All of a sudden, if the preacher preaches on anything that upsets us, then all of a sudden he's mean-spirited. But we're allowed to do whatever we want to do because we're saved and going to heaven. Show me that in the Bible. I can show you where we're bought with a price and our life is no longer our own. Oh, but preacher, you're meddling. Oh, well, just hang on. I'll get to good and meddling here in a minute. And we see his irritation. Now notice the inclination or the desecration. Look at verse 30. And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. Not only was this graven image Micah's God, Dan made it their God. Desecration. Absolutely appalling to God. My dear friends, I wonder if the Lord did inventory of our hearts and did inventory of our homes, how displeased He'd be with us. Amen. You wonder why there's not revival in America? It's because we don't want to give up our idols to have revival. But I'm not going to preach on any of that. I'm interested in verse 17 here for a minute. The Bible says, And the five men went in to spy, that went in to spy out the land... Let me start again. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither and took the graven image, the ephod, the teraphim, and the molten image. <clears throat> I got to thinking about this as I read this the other day. I got to looking at these four articles or four items that they took. A graven image was anything that was carved of wood or stone. That was something that mm, they'd made... They'd made with their hands, and they worshipped that god of wood or stone. Hmm? Sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? Amen. To pray and worship to something made of stone. Sure. But I wonder how silly are some of the things we worship. We find they not only took the graven image, they took the ephod. Now, the ephod was a garment that was worn by the priest, especially when he's inquiring of God. The ceremonial ephod that was worn by the high priest when he put on his priestly robes and he went before the throne of God into the most holy place when he went to, before the Ark of the Covenant and he offered up sacrifice. Uh, he had to adorn himself uh, after he slew the animal, after he collected the blood of the animal, he'd have to cleanse himself, take off those garments, put on his priestly garments. Uh, the ephod uh, was a long thing that kind of looked like a vest that would fit over the head. Uh, and the ceremonial ephod was made of three colors. Uh, 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 it was purple, scarlet, and blue. Represents the Trinity. Uh, purple represented the Father. Scarlet represented Christ. Uh, and the blue represented the Holy Spirit. Uh, 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 and we find that uh, on that ceremonial ephod, uh, attached to it on the shoulders were two great onyx stones. Uh, each one would have six names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And then the breastplate... Uh, 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 would come over and fit over the ephod. Uh, uh, but uh, those that uh, those priests that did everyday ministry, they would have uh, 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 ephods made of linen. Uh, uh, they weren't as uh, elaborate as that, but they would put that on uh, when he would minister and seek the Lord and inquire of the Lord. Well, they had an ephod there. But this ephod was not to inquire of the Lord. It was to inquire from these gods. Uh, can I say that there was not only a graven image in the ephod, but there was a molten image. 
And a molten image was an idol that was of melted metal that was molded uh, into a certain shape or into a certain uh, 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 fixture that they would worship that as well. Some were made of gold. Uh, some they were made of wood and they would overlay them with gold. Uh, but there was metal that would be molded, uh, 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 melted in order to mold this image and that was their idol. That's what they would worship and serve. And then there's something else called the teraphim. The teraphim was an idol that was used to seek for answers and direction. It could be made of wood, most time it was. It could be made of metal, it didn't really matter. But it was a particular god that they would only go to to seek answers or seek direction uh, and if you had one, it was considered to be good luck. You were fortunate to have one. Now, these teraphims, uh, Brother Donald, uh, could be small enough to carry, or they could be as tall as a man. Well, there was a teraphim in this particular house. Can I say that Satan has always tried to imitate the things of God? He always has. He's always wanted to become what Jesus Christ is. That's why he was cast out of heaven in the first place when he was the anointed cherub uh, because he wanted to exalt himself above Christ. Uh, when he was Lucifer, he was cast out. And since then, he's always seek to imitate whatever God does. Well, we know from the Scriptures God has cherubim. Cherubim are those uh, 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 angelic beings that... Uh, show the approach, uh, show the presence, but the unapproachability to God. They guard the, the throne of God. They guard certain things from God. They're very powerful angels. Uh, uh, when God uh, banished Adam and Eve from the garden, He put cherubim so they couldn't enter back into it. Uh, we know there are cherubim. We know in Isaiah six uh, there are seraphim. Uh, seraphim fly above the throne of Christ and the throne of God uh, and they cry holy, holy, holy uh, uh, they have uh, 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 six wings uh, and uh, uh, we know they're seraphim there were no, they're cherubim well the devil didn't have seraphim or cherubim so he has teraphim now it's interesting when you consider the term teraphim tera is a root word that means earth come from the earth so we know it's a teraphim. Now I find it interesting if you search teraphim in the Bible, you'll find it used six times in the Bible, that term teraphim. Six is the number of man, or the, or the number of man uh, 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 that is uh, 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 man that is uh, uh, destitute of God. We also know that 666 is the number of the Antichrist. And so with all that in mind, this is what I want to preach on. The devil using these teraphim and these false gods to mm, persuade people away from God and even take mm, people from the tribe of Dan that would worship those things rather than worship God. He's still doing the same thing today. I want to preach on the falseness of Satan. The falseness of Satan. Can I say, first of all, that Satan has false sanctuaries. He has false churches. Can I say, not everything that calls itself a church is a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say that not everything that calls itself a Christian church is a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say that not everything that calls itself a church preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, nor worships the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, can I say Satan has many uh, false churches today? Uh, can I say that uh, 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 he has false churches that uh, proclaim they are worshiping God, uh, that they mirror much of the same music that was popular in the 70s and 80s and 90s that was not uh, found in churches? Uh, they have uh, 
fog machines and smoke machines and rock bands. Uh, they have uh, uh, men that stand up and proclaim uh, uh, what thus saith the Lord when the Lord says what he said in the days of Jeremiah uh, when I have not spoken. Uh, God is not speaking through these men uh, because they do not belong to God. Uh, can I say that uh, 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 you can see they don't belong to God in uh, what they say, uh, how they carry themselves, how they dress, uh, what they preach. Uh, we've got a place here in Florida uh, just a couple years ago, uh, this so-called pastor got on the stage, uh, opened a can of beer, uh, drank it before people, and said if Jesus was here, he'd have a beer with me. Can I say that is not the God I serve. The Lord Jesus Christ had a lot to say about strong drink and about intoxicating beverages. Uh, and people say, well, Jesus drank wine. He drank the fruit of the vine, friends. There's a big difference between grape juice and wine. So we find that he has false sanctuaries. Used to in Florence, we had uh, what I called the hot tub church. It was called the river. They had uh, eight hot tubs in it. And they'd come in and get in their bathing suits, and they'd sit around their bathing suits, and a guy would bring a little devotion. There's nothing godly about that. Can I say the house of God is to be a house of prayer? Can I say the house of God is to be holy? He said, be ye holy for I'm holy. Uh, it's to be set apart for His honor and for His glory. Uh, uh, can I say the house of God ought to be separated and different than the world? Uh, but yet we live in a day and age when it's hard to make a distinction. Brother Clint, it wasn't that, uh, that long ago when you could go to a restaurant uh, 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 after service and you could tell who'd been to church and who hadn't been to church. Now, there's a lot of people going to church, but they're not going to the Lord's churches. Now, you're saying, Brother Doug, do you believe only Baptists are going to heaven? I didn't say that. I know a lot of Baptists that aren't going to heaven. My Aunt Lynn and I was talking about that before church. Some we've known. They're crispy critters tonight. I'm making, I'm making light of that. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, there's a, there's a lot of Baptists that aren't going. But can I say, there are folks saved that are not Baptists. Hmm? But can I say there are a lot of things going on in a lot of these churches and even in some Baptist churches that God's not pleased with. He has false sanctuaries, the sorry no good devil does. Hmm? Why? Because he's wanting to imitate the things of God and he's wanting to make people twofold the child of hell. He tells them they're okay if they do this, do this, do this, do this. I'm glad I didn't have to do anything to be saved. I'm glad Jesus did it all. Hmm? Uh, but can I say this tonight? He has convinced people they're okay when they're not. Every one of you knows somebody that goes to church, you work with somebody, you, you go to school with somebody, you know somebody that goes to a church, but they don't believe the way we believe. Amen. I remind you, Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. In Ephesians, Paul wrote that there's one faith, one baptism, one Lord overall. Can I say... Jesus started one church. There's 300 different religions and denominations in America tonight. Can I say, uh, why is there so many? Why is there so many versions of the Bible? Why is there so many? Because the devil is the author of confusion, and he's trying to confuse people so he can damn them to hell. He has false sanctuaries. Can I say this? He has false servants. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, in Matthew 24, 11, he said, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Can I say there are many false prophets, many false preachers today? Can I say a false preacher seeks, uh, seeks uh, attention, he seeks glory, he seeks personal gain? Hmm? Can I say they, they blend? They want to blend in with everybody? They bend the things of God, and they're bent on becoming something they're not. Hmm? A lot of false preachers tonight. Hmm? Can I say, I've heard some Baptists preach. I'm thinking, that's not the Word of God. Amen. A lot of false preachers preaching another gospel. Paul warned about them in his day. He said, even if an angel preach another gospel than that which I've delivered unto you, let him be accursed. A lot of false preachers. Mm. Mm. I find it amazing um, how many TV evangelists are on that don't preach the Bible, but they preach, you send me money and God's going to bless you. 
seed of faith. Mm -hmm. And that pop-off guy, he's got to be 120. His hair's as black as my shoe polish I put on my shoes tonight. Huh? And he's always got some scam or scheme. Uh, holy water, prayer cloth, uh, all this stuff. You know, I don't know what's, what's worse, him pushing it or people that'll buy it. Hmm? Uh, there's so many false ones out there. Jolly Osteen. You know, he never has actually admitted that they found that $600,000 in the wall of his so-called church behind the toilet when the plumber went in there to fix it. I hadn't heard another thing about it. It was just like it all went hush. Hmm? Huh? Listen, if you got to buy a ticket to get into somewhere to hear somebody preach, they're not of God. Hmm? Huh? You're welcome. Huh? And if they got a jet, chances are they're not of God. Huh? How much is jet fuel now? Anyway, you know, Brother Pete? I don't know. Way up there, huh? More than my salary can afford. Are you listening? I'm just trying to help you tonight. There's a lot of false preachers. Can I say that in the Baptist movement, there's this recovering fundamentalist movement where we got these, these so-called preachers that are apologizing for the way they were raised, that their, pre their, their parents were so mean and their preachers were so mean. And they got spanked when they were children, and it has warped their minds. Uh, they should have got spanked more. They got, they're messed up. Are you listening, huh? And, uh, and they were raised where they weren't allowed to do this, and weren't allowed to do this. And weren't allowed. Can I remind you that there's liberty in being saved? Uh, I've been set free. What have you been set free from? My sin. Mm. There are things that I could do I choose not to do because Christ lives in me. Are you listening? Uh, but these recovering fundamentalists, they're apologizing uh, and they are trying to change uh, the way that we uh, 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 now worship the Lord. Uh, they're trying to line up with the crossroads and with the vineyards and with all this other outfit. Uh, all they need to admit is uh, they don't know the Lord, they don't want the Lord, uh, but they want to still be religious. Do you know where this non-denominational movement came? from. It came from the hippies of the 60s. Uh, they uh, uh, would not conform to society. Uh, uh, they constantly rioted and picketed against everything from the Vietnam War to the way anybody else did anything in society where the hippies grew up. Uh, and what they realized uh, is they needed something in their lives so they uh, uh, started having uh, non-conforming religion, non-denominationism. Uh, I'll just come as you are, worship as you are, God accepts you yard. Uh, listen, Jesus uh, said, whosoever will may come. Uh, uh, can I help you with something? He takes sinners just as they are. Uh, but when he saves them, uh, he says that we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Uh, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, he didn't leave me the same way he found me. Uh, when he saved me, uh, he changed me uh, and put something in me. Uh, I don't want to go back to the world. I'm headed to heaven in heaven happy about it, huh? I don't need nerve pills to get over the way I was raised. Hmm? I'm thankful for a white-haired granddaddy that preached the Word of God. Uh, but we've got this recovering fun. And then, then I'm seeing something else. You know, I, I'm blessed to travel and the Lord's opened some doors. I preach in some meetings. But I'm seeing a thing in the South that's causing me to scratch my head. They're not recovering fundamentalists. They're standing up in our fundamental pre uh, churches and they're preaching emotionalism. They're not preaching the Bible anymore. They're preaching things to, call, to prey on people's emotions. Uh, and can I say, it works, hook, line, and sinker. Can I say this? If a fellow's got talent to sing and he can be real emotional in his preaching, he don't have to have any content. He's got them hooked. And they'll come out in droves to hear them. That's why you hear of all these revival meetings happening in the South going on week after week after week. But when that guy picks up and moves down the road, the revival's over. Can I say, every time I've ever read about true revival in the Bible, or read about true revival in years gone by, it didn't start by man and it didn't end by man. It's all sin of God and God uh, will bless it far beyond the meeting. Are you listening? Hmm. I'm seeing a lot of emotionalism out of a lot of young preachers down south. They don't say anything. 
They're very emotional. I'm just saying that he's got false sanctuaries. He's got false servants. Listen, a lot of these young preachers, all they want to be is famous. I, I'm reminded Jesus said that there was not a man born a woman greater than John the Baptist. And if John the Baptist was the greatest man as far as Jesus, and if Jesus won't lie to you, and this is what John said about being famous. He said, I must decrease and he must increase. It wasn't about John the Baptist, it was about Jesus. And so when somebody's promoting themselves, and it's all, look at me, 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 Jesus isn't nowhere in the midst of it. Are you listening? That didn't cost you anything extra, huh? Can I say he's got false sanctuaries, false servants, he's got false scriptures. Hmm? The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Every time I make the statement I'm about to make, I make somebody mad. So let me go ahead and tell you right now, if I make you mad, I'm going to go home, take a baby ass and go to sleep tonight. It's going to really upset me, okay? The Holy Spirit wrote one word. Hmm? The Word of God for English-speaking people is the King James Bible. Yeah. Every other version out there came from the Vaticanus Greek text. The only scriptures that came from the Texas Receptus or the received text, uh, the ones written by the hand of the apostles, uh, came, uh, 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 my dear friends, down through the ages and God preserved it and your King James Bible came from that text. Uh, uh, it is without error. It's infallible. It's inerrant. It's God breathed. Uh, and can I say the Holy Spirit only uses the Bible he wrote. Uh, uh, we're not born again of an incorruptible seed. Uh, we're not born born again of a seed uh, where man picked and chose what he wanted in it what he didn't want in it. Uh, and by the way, the Vaticanus text, that came from the Vatican. That came from the Catholics. Uh, uh, listen, uh, that's the universal church. Uh, that's the great whore that did deceive the nations in Revelation 17. Uh, uh, friend, uh, God's not using the world to save uh, sinners. Uh, God's using the Word to save sinners. Uh, and it's the Word that He pinned down uh, and saved Satan has allowed uh, all these false Bibles to come in existence. Uh, my dear people, uh, dear friends, the damn people to hell. Can I say this? The first time a false Bible was truly used in America was in 1901. That's the same year, the first time anybody ever spoke in tongues in America. There's a correlation there. Hmm? Can I say... There are people that claim that Joseph Smith got a third testament. There are people that claim uh, they've got the right way. We need a modern translation so it's easier to understand. Well, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth that the natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither indeed can he, for they are spiritually discerned. Uh, can I say, uh, 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 the only way you're going to understand the Bible, you need to know the author. Uh, and when you come uh, uh, to know him, he'll explain, he'll enlighten us and lead us and guide us into all truth. He wrote one Bible. And he only uses one Bible to save folks. And say, well, I've got a good friend I work with. They use the NIV and they're saved. They didn't get saved by that NIV. They got saved because somebody shared the Word of God. They're their loss as a goose. Right. Hmm? So I don't like that kind of preaching. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm going to take my baby ass and worry about it all night. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, just before he went off the scene, he said in verse 2, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You know what people don't want today? They don't want preaching. They don't want doctrine. Uh, well, let us all come together in the name of Jesus. Believe whatever we want to believe. Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace but a sword. What's a sword? Doctrine. The word of God divides people. Huh? Huh? The word of God, the sword that he brought divides uh, uh, father and mother, uh, 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 father and child, uh, father and son, uh, mother and daughter. Uh, it divides people. That's what doctrine does. And verse 3 said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust uh, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and said they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Hmm? The reason a fellow can stand up and drink a beer and tell, tell a crowd of thousands that uh, Jesus would, and then people go off in a fury is because they don't have sound doctrine. 
they do not know how to rightly divide the word they're not using the word and they've led people astray in droves and all the while in the shadows Satan's cackling because he knows he's got them that's why you and I are to be a light to this lost and dying world that's why we're to share the word of God that's why we're to take the gospel to them that's why we're to invite them to the house of God take them and so win and tell folks about the Lord Jesus Christ how else are they going to know huh they're not going to hear it from TV they're not going to hear it from these outfits there was one in Cincinnati about four years ago had a guy from California from the porn church and he told everybody porn's okay no, porn's what leads a lot of people to be pedophiles. Right. Leads to a lot of broken homes. Uh, can I say that uh, it's wicked? God tells us about fornication and adultery, but we don't like to hear about sin anymore, huh? That's why our schools are messed up, because they can't tell the kids no anymore. When I was in school, if, the, if you got caught doing something wrong, the principal would come down, you had to bend over and grab your ankles, and he'd take a board and he'd wear you out. You'd think twice about doing it again. Huh? I think some of you kids need that. Huh? I bet you Miss Sheridan's got a board or something around her house. What's the deal? Huh? Yeah, uh huh? You like them homeschooling parents that really homeschool, don't you? Huh? School hard knocks. You don't make mama mad, do you? You blame everything on Joseph, don't you? Yeah, I know. Uh, uh. Miss Sharon, I've never ever wanted to have a school. But if I ever do, I'm going to make you the principal, okay? All right. I'm looking at that little bundle of joy right there. I'm thinking, I'm rethinking that school thing. Uh, we got several teachers in here. We'll just put you to work. Won't pay you anything, but we'll put you to work, huh? <laughs> He's got false scriptures. Can I say this? He has a false sense. He gives people a false sense of security about things. Again, he imitates everything. Can I say he's imitated the use of the rainbow? Hmm? I don't know if you all noticed Sunday night. Did you notice after church Sunday night there was a double rainbow just down here toward the south? And one was very vivid. I don't know if I've ever seen one any brighter than that one. And I've been to Hawaii and saw rainbows every day. But that was so beautiful and so wonderful. And I thought about the creative uh, hand of God. And I thought about what God told uh, Noah when he got off the ark and what the bow really symbolized. And yet Satan has turned it into something wicked. Hmm? Huh? I like what they've done down there at the ark saying we're taking the rainbow back. I wish we would. Hmm? What can I say? When the devil owns the media... And the devil owns the politicians. And the devil owns denominations that say that's okay. Yeah. Huh? The only way we're getting the bow back is we're going to have to get on our knees and ask God to really do something miraculous in our nation. Amen. It's only coming back through local churches having revival. Huh? He imitates the rainbow. He imitates the relationship of marriage. I think God's pretty clear. Marriage is between a husband and and a wife, a man and a woman. And marriage is beautiful. And marriage was supposed to be the perfect picture of the relationship between Christ and His church. But can I say a marriage has become ugly in America? Huh? Can I say that uh, uh, today a lot of them don't even get married. They just shack up. I get in trouble when I say that, but oh well. Uh, uh, or they'll just try out like they're trying out a used car before they'll get married. Uh, or they'll go in the mindset, well, we'll get married. If it don't work, we'll get a divorce. Uh, what can I say, my dear friends? All those things are ugly. Not even talking about the other things that are accepted as marriage. Hmm? Can I say the devil's got a false sense of security? And people think they're okay. Hmm? Uh, you know why they get their way? an old adage whatever wheel squeaks the loudest gets the grease Amen. see we've been lulled to sleep worried about the preacher preaching too mean about our cell phones that we can't organize Christians to do anything 
But all they got to do is sound the horn and they'll show up everywhere and have a parade, they'll have a march, they'll have something to voice their opinion and they're getting the grease because we sit by idly and say, oh well, the Lord's coming back. What about all the people that's being persuaded wrongly and are dying and going to hell? Hmm? God help us. Can I say he gives a false sense of what's right? Isn't it amazing we live in a day and age when nobody's wrong? Huh? huh? Used to, it, right or wrong. Now you can't tell anybody they're wrong because it'll hurt their feelings and it'll warp them. I mean, every little league game's got to end in a tie. No, nobody loses. And, and, and they're even, you know, making it as adults where everybody's got to be successful and made to feel important. Huh? Used to, if you worked hard, you got rewarded. Amen. Now you work hard, you get penalized. Yeah. I was talking to Brother Jim for, for church. It's a, what about now you've worked all your life to, to have good credit, and now you're being penalized because people that's got bad credit feel bad about the fact they can't get the loans that you get, so they're going to penalize you so that those people feel better, and they're going to give them extra points. Right. What a blessing. Amen. Hmm? Everything that has happened in this country in the last two and a half years has penalized the middle class. Amen. You know why? No middle class, no America. You know that, don't you? They want this thing to go to socialism. We do know that when the Antichrist shows up, there will be a one world government. America will have to fall. We're watching it happen right before our eyes. And yet, we get upset when the preacher preaches about us missing church for little Johnny's ball games yeah. rather than being out knocking on doors, soul winning, being in the house of God, being a light, being a witness. Uh, got real popular right there. Huh? Hmm? It's all right because when we stand before God, you're not going to be able to look at me and say, well, the preacher didn't preach right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Amen. Uh, I wish I'd have listened to the preacher. Too late when you're standing before God. Mm. Everybody's got a sense of what's right. Nobody's wrong. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to bite my tongue. I really am. I'm wrestling with God right now. Uh, I'm just going to leave it alone. Because if I don't leave it alone, Charlie, me and you is only going to be the ones that are going to be here Sunday. And you're going to be here because your mom is going to beat you if you aren't here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, can I say, I go into churches and I see people wear clothes. I am going to say it. i got to say it. I see, I see people wear clothes that they didn't even wear to the clubs back in the 70s. Hmm? The neckline and ladies' clothes are getting lower and the skirts are getting higher. Uh, and, and men come in looking like a bunch of bums uh, now listen God gave his best he expects us to be our best hmm? if the best you got is a pair of bibbed overhauls and a white shirt then wear, wear your bibbed overhauls and your white shirt but I know for a fact that's not most people's best uh, mamas take daughters out to go shopping and mamas are looking for things so that their, and their daughters can be buddies hmm Mamas are trying to look like their, their daughters, teenage daughters, and teenage daughters are trying to look like 35-year-old uh, women. It's a mess. Yeah. Huh? And, and we, got, we got kids, you know, boys that don't even know how to pull their pants up anymore. They don't know what a belt is. Right. Miss Annette and I was at Kroger today, and we saw a full moon this afternoon. I'm not kidding you. It was crazy. I looked at her. I said, did you see that? She said, unfortunately, that will never leave my mind. Huh? No. I wanted to go up and say, Sir, do you need a belt? But I was afraid to because he's a big dude. But anyway, uh, it's sad. Uh, young men, why do you think you got to look like a hood? That's what we used to call them. Uh, Miss I was driving down the road today, and this guy was driving a car. I'm not lying to you, Brother Jim. He's driving a car, and he had the seat laying back. He's laying down. There's no way he could see anything. I'm thinking, I'm getting past this sucker before he hits me. Uh, and we got kids idolizing that. Right. Uh, 
well, I want to be uh, uh, somebody that's uh, hip-hop or hip or whatever. I want to be cool. I want to... You know what you ought to be? You ought to want to be Christ. Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, are you pleasing Christ or are you pleasing this world? Amen. See, it gives a false sense of what's right. right. Well, Brother Doug, it's Wednesday. So? Well, I'm in church. Yeah. Isn't that what you're supposed to be? Amen. But everybody's right, Brother Donald. Brother Doug, you know you offend people. So did Jesus. That's why they crucified him. Hmm? I, I see she's going to be a good Baptist. Doesn't put her to sleep. Mine started out of sleep over there, and she's still asleep, and she's asleep. Oh, we're training them up right. He gives people a false sense of what's right. Do you know what the essence of sin is? My right to my claim to myself. Amen. And that's where we live today. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll do what I want to do. Well, that's fine. But you're going to answer for it. I'm just trying to help you. Just trying to stave you from heartache when you look into the Savior. By, by the way... He's not the babe in the manger anymore. Right. He's not the broken shell of a man on the cross anymore. He's the Lord of glory. Amen. And John said his eyes were as flames of fire, his hair was white as wool, his voice was as many uh, thunderings. Uh, listen, when we stand before him, there is no argument. Right. He is Lord. And he gave us his word. And for those that comply and do what thus saith the Lord... Oh, you'll be so blessed when you see him. But I don't know about you, I fail him every day. And long before we ever see the streets of gold and then the mansions over the hilltop and, and the gates of pearl and the walls of jasper, there's a thing called the judgment seat of Christ. In the back of my mind, that's always there. Boy, you're going to have to give an account. And I'm not going to give an account of what Brother Brian did or Brother Randy did or anybody else. I'm going to give an account of what this old boy did, what this old boy said, what this old... And I'm going to give an account of every message I've ever preached. Mm -mm. 36 years I've been preaching. I'm going to give an account of everyone. I couldn't tell you every message I preached, but God can. Mm. Can I say? You're going to give an account of every message you've heard. Can I help you with this? When you lay out of church and you're not providentially hindered and you're not sick, you're going to give an account of the messages you right. should have heard. You, you won't be able to say, well, God, I didn't know that. And he'll say, well, on this night, the preacher preached on it because I told him to preach on it, but where were you? Right. See, brother, this kind of preaching isn't popular. It's not. And that's why Satan's winning the war because we've got preachers that won't preach on, the, on, on Satan. I, I knew yesterday when the Lord was revealing all this, the devil wasn't going to like it because he's been fighting me ever since. But that's all right. I done read the, book, the end of the book, chapter 20. He's thrown the lake of fire in chapter 21. We get New Jerusalem. We win. Huh? He also gives people a false sense of reassurance, a false sense of satisfaction. I've never seen so many people fight for something that's so wrong. And they think they're all right. Who gives them that satisfaction? Hmm? Can I say, I remember a time when people wouldn't, wouldn't even throw a beer can out in the church parking lot or church property. Now at night they'll, they'll sneak in, and that's why you had to put the gate up, they'll sneak in and party in the church parking lot. Hmm. I could remember a time when people wouldn't say certain things around the preacher, around the church house. Shoot, that's why I don't walk around much before church, because you'll hear some people say it before church. Hmm. The devil gives people a false satisfaction. Hmm? It amazes me how many people in our community have never heard a clear-cut presentation of the gospel and how many people don't even know what church is about. All they think about church is that it's full of a bunch of hypocrites or it's a cult or it's a bunch of people who think they're better than somebody else that just judges people. That's all they think about church. Uh, 
my daughter, I remember, this wasn't that long ago, uh, she was with some friends of hers and said, there's one of my dad pastors, and these girls went to the church up the street and didn't even know what a pastor was. Hmm. But people think they're okay. Go out and start talking to people. Everybody thinks they're going to heaven. Where do they get that false sense of security and satisfaction? The devil. Hmm. Let me say this lastly. Because a couple of you have already passed out. A couple of you look a little, little, little faint. And I haven't even been, I've been on my best behavior tonight, Brother Phil, haven't I? Yeah, thank you. I gave him five bucks for church to be on my corner on this deal right here. And I say, on the falseness of Satan, and there's so much. We, I mean, the Bible says we're, we're not ignorant of his devices, and the Bible makes us, lets us know he's got wiles. And can I say that he's using the same things that he used on Eve, he's using today. His methods haven't changed. He don't even try to masquerade them anymore. Can I say he's got a false son? Yep. You remember when I told you he imitates all the things of God? Yep. Do you know why he's got false churches? Because he knows that Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it, and he knows that Jesus is coming back for his church. And so he wants to have a church of his own. And just like Jesus was the Son of God, he has his own son who's going to lead his church right where the devil wants them, to the lake of fire. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the whole chapter, chapter 2, deals with the son of Satan. But listen what the Bible says. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day? The, the translation of the saints, the rapture of the church. Uh, or I, I'm sorry, not the rapture of the church, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? See, he doesn't come back when, when during the rapture. We meet him in the air. But that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Revelation 13, verse 1, it said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast, rise up out of the sea having said seven heads and ten horns and upon his ten uh, his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the names of blasphemy verse 4 said and they worship the dragon satan which gave power unto the beast his son the antichrist and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast and who is able to make war with him? And there were given unto him a mouth of speaking, mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We know that when the Antichrist comes, he'll set up a one world government. He'll have a one world religion. And in his government, the only way you'll be able to buy and sell is you need to take the mark of the beast. You've got to have his mark in your hand or your forehead. And without his mark, you can't go to the grocery store. We do know that there will be 144,000 Jews saved out of the Great Tribulation. We know that Revelation says a great number that no man can number will come out of the Great Tribulation. But most of them, well, all of them will reject the mark of the beast, but most of them will be hunted down and killed for their faith. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it lets us know that anybody's heard the gospel in this dispensation and rejected it, that God will bring strong delusion on them to where they'll believe a lie and they'll take the mark of the beast and they'll be damned. Satan's got a son. May be alive right now, probably is. About ready to take over. My dear friends, while we get upset and we sit and twiddle our thumbs and we don't do anything for the cause of Christ, 
Would you all agree that Joe Biden is not running America? He don't even know what day of the week it is. He don't. But somebody's running Joe Biden. And the same person's working throughout the world in governments and heads of states. And they're all coming together and they're all pushing their agendas and they're all pushing the same things. They're all saying the same things. You know, global warming's destroying our, our universe. And they're pumping all this money and all this stuff, but it's not going for global because glo the earth isn't getting any hotter than it's ever been, but one day it's going to get real hot. It's going to melt with a fervent heat. It amazes me they push all this green energy. Green, if I hear my, green anything else, I'm going to throw up. I'm really, I, I, I've had enough of it. They fly to somewhere like Switzerland, and they all fly in these, these multi-million dollar jets, and they, they, they burn up more fuel and, and waste more money and waste more stuff than we will ever use. And yet, we're the bad guy. They try to get everybody to buy an electric car, not letting people know that it actually, fossil fuel-wise, costs more to have an electric car than it does a gasoline engine. And they push these agendas. And it's all about manipulating people and controlling people. And all. Who do you think is doing the manipulating and the controlling? The God of this world. And the only thing that is keeping him from having his way is the fact that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is still here, and the Holy Spirit is still indwelling us and is still working in this world. Because right. when we are taken out of this thing, so is He. Yep. And then Satan will have no constraint. And he'll have his way for seven years in this world. And can I say, while we're here, shouldn't we impact it? The only thing you can take to heaven with you is somebody else. Why don't you try and be a light? Hmm? Do you realize that when you stand before God, you're going to get stand before God and give an account of every word that He gave us and how faithful we were to it? The old hymn writer said it best when he said, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Do you ever think about when you have to stand before God and give an account? Did you ever think about that? Hmm. You ought to. We're so worried about what other people think about us, but we don't care what the Lord thinks about us. We ought to think about that. Every day. See, First John, it tells us that he's coming back we don't know what it shall be like but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and the Bible says that every man that hath this hope in himself purify himself see if you're looking for the Lord to come back today guess what you're going to live pretty close to him that's why you ought to think about it often the Lord could come back today is he pleased with me See, you purify yourself if you're thinking that way because you're going to live right, you're going to walk right, you're going to talk right, you're going to be right. But when you only think about Him on Wednesday and Sunday, what about the other days? You might have a graven image or a molten image. Or God help you a teraphim that you're letting direct you instead of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God. God help us to realize we're going to give an account of ourselves unto Him. Let me ask you a question tonight. Have you been deceived? Do you know the Lord? If not, you can know Him. He's let you be here tonight and hear about Him. You hear about the falseness of Satan and I just touched on it. So you don't have to end up being proselyted by Satan and die and go to hell. But if you're here tonight and you're saved, what are you doing to keep somebody else out of hell? How's your prayer life? How's your walk before God? How's your witness? How's your faithfulness? 
If somebody else looked at you and you was the only hope they had to get into heaven, would they make it? See, that's sober. And that's why the Lord told us to be sober-minded. Because all around us there are people and we're written epistles known and read of all men. They're watching our lives. Are they seeing something real? Or are they seeing something that is keeping them from coming to Christ? Lord, help us to realize Satan never sleeps. He's got more money. He's got more means. He's got more resources than we'll ever have. But we got the Lord. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And we can make a difference and impact somebody's life if we'll make ourselves available to God. God help us to make a difference. Satan's a liar and the father of it. And he's lying to people. It's our job to tell them the truth. Tell them with compassion. Tell them with kindness. But tell them the truth. And point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, preacher, I, I don't know nothing about All you got to do is tell them how you met the Lord. Tell them how the Lord changed your life. Give them your testimony. And just point them to Jesus. I say this and I'll quit. I've been trying to quit. You all know Brother Rocky. Love Brother Rocky. Brother Rocky got saved in prison, facing a life sentence. Got saved, and the Lord miraculously worked where he only had to serve three years. And he got out of prison. One of the first people we went to, Brother Phil, was one of his old running buddies. He used to play cards and all kinds of hellacious things because he wasn't saved. One of the first guys he went to. You all know him as Brother Jerry Allen pastor's old rugged cross baptist church in shelby north carolina brother rocky went to brother jerry and all brother rocky could tell him jesus loves you jerry couldn't get over that but rocky singing in the choir at faith baptist church and watches brother jerry come in sit down Brother Rocky's still in the choir and Brother Jerry couldn't sit there much longer and made his way to the altar and somebody led him to the Lord in the altar Amen. because he couldn't get over. What a difference Jesus made Rocky's life. How many other Jerry Allens are out there? And Brother Jerry's one of the greatest Christians that I know of today. How many others are out there just wait for somebody to come by and say, Jesus loves you. Look what he did in my life. He can do that for you. Friend, we, I don't know how much time we got, but we got enough time to tell somebody. Why don't you tell somebody that the Lord loves them and he'll change their life? Hmm? You know, if we'd all just win one person to the Lord this year, we'd already be having to start that new building because we, I mean, we'd, 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 we'd have them in the parking lot listening on the radio. So why don't we just try to win one? Then after we win one, let's try and win another. And then try to win another. We've got them packets out there. Give them out to somebody you know. That'll help them. No telling what God will do if we'll put our best foot forward. Because anything we do for Him is not in vain. You can't impact somebody's life. The question is, will you? God help us. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you want to come thank the Lord somebody told you about him. Maybe you want to thank the Lord that you didn't listen to the devil's lies that night you got saved. Maybe you want to come tell the Lord you love him. Maybe you want to come tell the Lord you're sorry you haven't been what you should be. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. Why don't you come? Maybe you're here tonight and you're not saved. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I love you. And I thank you for your truth. 
And Lord, I know some of the things I said is not popular. But Lord, people need to be reminded. You left us here for a reason. That's to tell others. Share the gospel. God, we get so wrapped up in our own little worlds and we've let the devil give us the mindset of selfishness that, God, we forget about others that need the Lord. So, God, I pray you'd speak to hearts tonight. God, we certainly pray if somebody's here and lost, Lord, the sweet Holy Spirit would go to them, reveal their lost condition, help them to come put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, just speak to hearts. Have your way in this invitation. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.